If you want to use box shadow or effects on your elements with Tailwind CSS, it's possible. Here, I got an application running and I got a card. And in this card, I got some text, a button. But the thing is that this card is white on a white background. And I would like to give some effect, some perspective. So what can I do is to use a shadow. And here we see that we get classes that we can use to add some shadow, okay? So let's try now with shadow MD on my card. And what's gonna happen is that it's going to add a shadow which gives a bit of consistency, a bit of presence inside my application. Okay, that's really cool. But let's say that I would like to have a bigger shadow. It's possible always with Tailwind with the uh, actually um, size element that we can use. So we got medium, but let's try with large. And we will see that suddenly we got a bit more shadow. And if we go down, we can see that we have several sizes, medium, large, XL, 2XL, that actually create a specific shadow already determined by Tailwind. So if I use 2XL shadow, there we go, I will have a bigger shadow this way. So it gives a lot of consistency and it's really easy to apply. You use the class shadow, all right? However, if you want to have some shadow inside, what you can do is to use the class shadow inner. So here, it's not necessarily the case, okay? But as we see, I've put some shadow inside my div. So it's not very visible right now, but yeah, it's working. And sometimes if you don't want to have some shadow, you can use the shadow non class on an element and it's gonna remove the current shadow you added, okay? What you can work also is on the uh, color of your shadow, which is really cool. So I'm going to get back and put a shadow MD because I really liked the shadow MD. I think it's enough. Uh, too much shadow, it's a problem, but here it's better. I'm going to work with that and I'm going to add some colors. So if I go down there, we see that we've got some shadow display. Let's say that I'm going to add, uh, let's get back there. And I already use cyan, so I'm going to add uh, shadow cyan and let's say 500. I don't know if it's going to give a nice effect. It doesn't, but it's all right. <laughs> the demonstration is here. So we've got our element there with the uh, uh, shadow cyan 500. Uh, however, what I want to do is to put it instead on my button. So I'm going to use here a shadow MD and then the shadow cyan 500. And I got a bit of effect. However, that's not really what I want. I would like to cut it. So what I can do with Tailwind is just to cut the color and just add some opacity, okay? So here, opacity on 100, it's the normal color. On 80, on less, etc., etc., you lower the opacity. So here I'm going to put half 50. So that, there we go. And there we go. We've got a like a shadow that is less aggressive. Also, what I want to add, there is a text white because on my button. And there we go, we've got something nicer in my opinion, okay? So you can work with box shadow color this way. So as I told you, you can work also with the opacity of elements on Tailwind CSS. And here we've got the opacity of the elements. So which is very useful sometimes because um, what we would like to do is to say, yeah, if this button is disabled, I would like to add some opacity. Okay, it's possible. Well, we're going to try just this. If I put opacity 5, okay, what's going to happen is that my button is going to almost disappear. Okay, but it's still clickable. Be safe, it's still clickable. You will have to deal with another class if you want to disable it, okay? So basically here, as we saw, we put 50% of the cyan uh, background shadow there. Uh, actually, if we put opacity 50, it's exactly the same. What's gonna happen is that my button is going to be on opacity 50. I would do that if I would like to disable my component. Okay, so opacity is really useful. We can also put opacity on every element uh, made by Tim. I'm gonna pass real quick on the mix blend mode because I personally didn't use it a lot in my Tailwind CSS experience. 
but you can control how elements should blend with background, okay? So as you see, you can mix two elements and it will uh, mix the colors automatically. This is how it works with mix blend mode and you can also work with the background blend mode with actually helps you to deal with the color, etc, etc. It can be useful. I have to admit that for me, I never had to use it. It can be useless, but if you look for it, it's in the effect column there. Let's talk now about the filters and filters are very, very useful because they help you to deal with images and you're not obliged to send back the image to Photoshop or just to call your graphist or designer to change the image. You can use Tailwind to do it. So let's talk about the blur. So here in my example, I've got a card, like it's a card for a blog. And we would have an image there that I picked up on Unsplash. And what I'm gonna do, I'm going to blur this image. And as we see, Tailwind, provide to us a blur class that I can use. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the blur SM on the image there. So I'm going to get back and I'm going to add this blur SM class to my image. And when I update, my image is finally blurred. Okay. So let's say that um, we would like to have a higher blur. We can use actually the sizes that you know on Tailwind CSS. And look at that, there we go, we've got the blur to Excel. I'm going to give you uh, something uh, really nice is that, let's say that the whole card would be blurred on two Excel there. So it's a bit too much actually. What I'm gonna do is just use blur. I'm going to update, yeah, I will have this. And let's say that when I pass my mouse on it, I want to remove the blur. So what I can do is use blur none. So what I'm gonna do is hover and then blur none. Okay, I'm going to update. And when I pass my mouse, it's going to remove the blur. Oh, nice it is. You see, I'm going to remove the blur just on passing my mouse there. So you can use blur to blur your images. Let's talk now about the brightness. So I'm going to remove this blur stuff, otherwise it will be difficult. <laughs> I'm going to get back, I got my image there. And let's say that I wanna work on the brightness. I can use brightness and the values comes from zero to 200. Okay, so what I'm going to do there, I got the image, I'm going to add brightness 125 on the image. And when I update, suddenly my image is brighter. Okay, so you can use brighter to improve or to lower actually, and let's try to lower it. Let's put 50 instead. There we go. I'm going to update and finally my image is darker. All right. So what's happened if I put it on my card? Okay. Again, you see that the card is this color and we can do exactly the same. So like just put on hover a brightness 100. Okay. To see what's going to happen. And when I pass my mouse on it, there we go, it appears there. So that's a nice effect that we can use also sometimes, we can use the brightness. In contrary, let's talk about the contrast. We can use also the contrast. So let's say that we're gonna have a contrast and it's a bit different, but it looks like the same effect. Okay, so contrast 50, so I'm gonna update, okay. And there we go. So we pass from gray to um, a normal contrasted um, card. We have the filter drop shadow that helps us to drop some shadow, which is basically the same as the shadow we saw before. We've got the grayscale. So grayscale can be really, really useful. So let's try again. Let's put grayscale, for instance. And suddenly we add our post <coughs> in a, in a grayscale but on hover if we want to remove it we can put grayscale zero so i'm going to put grayscale and zero don't ask me why they didn't put grayscale known we can also work with u rotate filters so here we've got an example and it comes from zero to 180 we are going to change actually basically the color there so i'm going to put you rotate 90 and suddenly we change the color dynamically. It can be very useful. We can also invert our image. So let's say that here I'm going to put invert. So the image or the card here, I'm, I'm taking both examples. So it's 
really easy for you to understand. There we go, we see that we can invert. So you got very good example of there to use actually filters on a lot of elements in CSS. You can use also saturate, it goes from zero to 100. So let's put saturate and personally, I like saturate because sometimes the images are not very well colored, okay? They didn't pass by any uh, graphics before. And here we see suddenly we've got more uh, uh, presence, okay? We got an image that is brighter, that the contrast is very good. And we've got this effect that is really nice also. Uh, we can use sepia, honestly, I never use sepia, but let's say that if you had a, a very a, a very old website, uh, a very old style design website, you could use a sepia on some picture. Or if you want just to make somebody older and make an old picture, you could use sepia. Yeah, there's a lot of filters that you can use for the uh, photos. Sometimes you would need to put some elements blurred, but not blurred as we see before blurred inside the, this element. So basically you would use backdrop blur SM. And here we've got uh, uh, an absolute division inside our image that is blurring a part of the image, okay? So we got the image there and we got another div that is uh, blurred there and it's creating some blur. It can be very, very useful when you want to make the image up here, but to blur some part, okay? And you can work also on the brightness of these divs. You can work on the contrast. You can work on the grayscale, on the you rotate. You understood. You can irritate all the filters before, but on element on top of each other through this backdrop, actually through this backdrop class.